I now call the Iberia Parish Council meeting to order for January 12, 2022. The current time now is 6.02. I'll have the prayer led by Council Member Marty Tron and the pledge by Council Member Viator. All Father. Our Father, the Lord, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Councilman Vietor. Pledge of to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God. Indivisible, <coughs> Madam Clerk, please initiate the roll call. Tommy Pollard? Here. Michael Landry? Here. John Viator? Here. Lisa Lloyd Brown? Here. Warren Gotcherson? Here. Natalie Broussard? Here. Paul Landry? Here. Jamie Strunghall? Here. Scott Rossenay? Here. Eugene Olivier? Here. Brian Napier? Here. Lady Brown? Here. Lady Brown? Here. Here. Chad Machuan. Here. We have 14 members in the quorum. Moving on to public comments. I'll need a motion to go into public comments. I have a motion by Councilman Lan uh, Tommy Pollard. Second by Councilman Olivier. Any discussion, members? Hearing none, roll call. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Hearing no opposition, the ayes have it, and the, the uh, motion passes unanimously. Madam Clerk, starting with number one. Comments from the general public on non agenda items A. Mr. Ray Boyd to address the council regarding repair work on Vita Shaw Road. Mr. Boyd, welcome. Please state your name and address for the record, please, sir. My name is Ray Boyd. I live on night. One second, let's get that mic on for you, Mr. Ray. Go ahead. Ray Boyd, 1907 Vita Shaw. And um, <coughs> I'm here to bring up the uh, bridge. Is, the bridge is out. It's getting dangerous. They're bringing uh, cane trucks across it now, and we only have one lane, and there's, there's gonna be an accident. Someone's gonna get hurt there, and uh, it's collapsing more and more. I check it all the time. Um, I know we don't have the funds for it, but why don't we go after the other bridge where there is funds and have DOT take the bridge out or whatever and open up the account the way you could fix the bridges and the, and the roads in District Nine, uh, District Nine, and that's what I'm bringing to attention. We need to fix that bridge. We need y'all help. Are Thank there you. any questions for Mr. Boyd? Yeah, I, I had a especially with the train, Mr. Boyd. If can, Mr. Brown, do you can you notice to see if that lights on in the back of his? It's on. It's kind of hard to hear him here. If you oh, could sorry. just repeat what you said, Mr. Boyd, it was, I, I had a tough time hearing you with the train, and I'm sure. Well, the bridge on Vita Show is collapsing. The pylons are broken. Um, the, we had all this rain a couple of months ago. Well, it flooded on the backside, so it saturated the mud. Well, now the trucks are sinking it, and uh, they keep putting black top and still sinking on one side right now. Uh, they came and dug it up, filled it with limestone, and packed it. Didn't do any good. Two months later, it's already <coughs> the trucks are just bouncing. Now we got the cane trucks coming across the single side because they blocked off the other side, and um, it's just getting worse. And we need to, need to repair it because it's all wooden pilings and it's rotten. I'd suggest that we get rid of the other bridge that's on the bayou, and we have what 2.9 something like that in the account give dot the bridge and let them do what they want with it and bring the money back to district nine fix the bridges and the roads we have someone's gonna get hurt okay thank you uh i do but before you go mr boyd i, I do believe councilman landry on the question has this been turned into to to the, to the parish council i mean to the uh if we report yes. we've reported it and they came out and done some studies and ran a vehicle at a certain speed and um checked it on the bounce and then we can feel the vibration of the house yeah. 
Yeah. And I'm over 100, I don't know if it's me, over 150 feet here. Yeah. And I would hope our parish president can address it. I just was okay. wondering. Okay. Yes. Did you want to take that opportunity to do that? I, before you do, I did see uh, Councilman Rawson on a question. Did you, were you finished, uh, Councilman Landry? Yeah. I'm good. Councilman Always. Landry yields back. Councilman yeah. Rawson on a question. First, thank you for coming. Uh, it's not often you get people just coming here to, to ask about a, a safety concern. Now, with that being said, uh, that money was approved for the VHL bridge back in, I don't know, Marty, you might have to help me. This is before Marty. I was on the council. <laughs> so, yeah, and then it came up after yeah. I was on the council. So the, the one thing I would say is a lot of farmers look at this bridge and this road as a throughway to the mill. Yes. Uh, I've actually had suppers with some of the farmers that really, really want this bridge <coughs> fixed. Now, I've heard all the stories about the politics that happened in the past. Uh, that's, that's not my problem. Uh, why it didn't get done, uh, whoever was in this room at the time should have made it happen, as far as I'm concerned. Why is it lingering another 15 years or whatever it is? Now, I know it's a safety concern, I get it. Uh, but there, there's going to be more funds available possibly next year, and we all know the money I'm talking about. We don't even know how much this costs yet, I don't believe, huh? We didn't get anything. So. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll yield to the parish president. Maybe Councilman, uh, Council Member uh, Rawson, he yields from parish president. Yeah, yeah um, both of them are correct in what they're saying. That particular bridge is, um, is in definite need of additional repairs to, in addition to what we've done hey. to the bridge. We hired an engineering company to go out there and take a look at the bridge and they actually close one lane on the bridge. So the bridge is passable right now, but the bridge really and truthfully need to be replaced. At some point in the, in the near future, that bridge is gonna to have to be replaced. And um, I understand, I know what uh, Mr. Ray is talking about, you know, everybody know what Mr. Ray is talking about when he's saying the other bridge, um, and Scott references as well, that, um, that was supposed to be replaced some 10 plus years ago. Um, at that particular time, there was a bridge, <coughs> the Vita Shaw Bridge was going to be replaced with the bridge that we, that was removed by the Department of Transportation from uh, Delta. And at that particular time, and listen, I'm not going to try to recite everything because it's, it's many years ago. At that particular time, the, the councilman that was in that seat was trying to simply just get the bridge from Delta bring that bridge over there and replace the bridge. And the funds uh, came about from the Department of Transportation, from the Ridge, Pro uh, Ridge Program and whatever. Uh, prior to actually, if I'm not mistaken, they already had it gone out for bid and had, but I think what happened is some concerned citizen at, at that particular time uh, came and they started talking about that bridge um, being a historic bridge and there was a whole lot of stuff that took place. To make a long story short, since then, that bridge <coughs> called, since then, the bridge that we actually had gotten from Delcom, which is still on Highway 14 at DOTD's yard, is, you, can't, you can't use it anymore. It's not repairable. It's just sit there. It's sat there for too long, so now it can't be used. The estimated cost, according to the Department of Transportation, if I'm not mistaken, is around $14 million mm -hmm. to replace that bridge maybe a year or so ago. And you would have to think with the cost of everything going up right now, maybe even more than that right now. So um, Scott is correct. You know, we, we're always looking at ways to try to come up with additional dollars to do things. That's going to be a major, it's going to be a major <coughs> cost. We're going to get the funds from right now. We don't know. Uh, but we do know that we went in the past and we went to the people trying to get dedicated funds for roads and bridges in 2017. That didn't work. I got a feeling we'll be going back and trying to do the same thing in 22 or 23. Uh, we have a lot of bridges that need some uh, uh, attention um, and a lot of roads. We've got about $34 million worth of roads along that need to be overlaid. So we have some serious issues when it pertains to <coughs> roads and bridges and I think repairs that's going to need to be addressed. And I hope I explained it the best I can explain it, but I can tell you right now, um, the $250,000, $300,000 we get a year for um, buying materials. Michael Broussard just went out to do the annual bid like we normally do at the beginning of the year, you know, to buy materials, your limestones, your signs, your culverts, or whatever. Um, that cost has gone up two to three times in materials cost. So we have some things that we're going to have to look at this year to address, and um, it's not going to be it's not going to be that much fun, but we have to get it done. Councilman Rawson, does that answer your question? 
you still had the floor. Are you yield back? Councilman Rawson, are you yields back? I mean, Councilman Landry. I'm just for one comment, uh, I hope people are listening to what we need in this parish and what we need to do in this parish. And, and I don't know if taxes or whatever, but we need to reevaluate how we're doing things and what we need. Just a comment, and I yield Amen. back. Thank you, Councilman Landry. Amen. Councilman Trohm, any question? Yes, sir. We uh, we had an, an engineer, the engineering company in Wayne County <coughs> at it, um, and we wanted to make sure that that bridge could stay open for the time being, and uh, and it is open for the time being. We're looking at a whole lot of stuff, uh, uh, James. Of course, for me, anytime you're dealing with something like a, a span, I don't know if you call them culverts, it's like a span bridge or culverts or whatever the case. If you're talking two pipes, no. No, something uh, like what's on uh, in Bill Barrett when you cross over T by U. You know, it's, it's cement. Where's Dexter? Contra Span. Yeah, definitely. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's kind of expense, expensive, but yes. Okay. No, yes, we could. We looked at it. In fact, we're looking at that for a bridge in Chad's district. It's not cheap at all. You know, uh, I personally like span bridges, and the reason I like span bridges is because when your water is flowing underneath your bridges, you're not collecting the trees and the boxes and everything hitting your pollen. Is that the other? And if we're going to look at doing something in the parish, we need to look at longevity, something that's going to protect us and help us to where we don't have to just repeat, <clears throat> you know, maintenance work all the time before a storm comes, run into every bridge, trying to make sure you don't have a tree hooked up there. So your span bridges are, are, are better bridges uh, as far as I'm concerned for, for those types of things. But again, <coughs> that's not cheap. I was just looking for a cheap alternative. Yeah, and we're looking, we're looking at everything. But we also have to look at how much weight that's going to be able to you know, can cross those bridges. Does that answer your question, Councilman? Councilman Toronto yields back. Anyone else in questions? Thank you, Mr. Boyd, for being here. Uh, we do have a person that is applying for board and commission. Mr. T.J. Dronet is applying for the Iberia Parish Communications District. He will be speaking before you tonight. Mr. Dronet, if you can state your name. Say again. Ben Anagen died. Yeah, that's what we own, right? Yeah. Okay. Say again. Never mind. Okay. Good evening. My name is TJ Dronet. I live 617 Mars Street in town. Um, I'm applying for the appointment position of the ambulance representative for the Iberia Parish Communications District. I've been with a Caden ambulance for 13 years now. I worked in a, uh, New Iberia on a critical care ambulance for 11 years, and I currently serve as the operations coordinator for our Caden ambulance. I, mean, I know it's important <coughs> to get dispatched to the right calls, timing, and everything to our citizens and our parish. So I'd just like to put my name in the hat for the appointment of the seat. Members, are there any questions for Mr. Dronet? Here and none. Thank you for wanting to serve, sir. Thank you for Thank being you. here. Thank you. Have a good evening. Moving on, uh, Ms. Uh, Madam Clerk, to uh, agenda item B. Announcement of public hearings to be held on an ordinance affecting reapportionment for Iberia Parish, all in accordance with Section 2-02 of the Home Rule Charter entitled Reapportionment as follows. One, January 12th, 2022, at the Executive Committee meeting, first public hearing. Two, January 26th, 2022, at the Iberia Parish Council meeting, second public hearing. And three, February 9th, 2022, at the Iberia Parish Council meeting, third public hearing. Okay. Moving on to item number two. I'm, I'm sorry, Councilman? Councilman Brown on question? I know that we have to have some uh, public hearing. Seemed like to me we did that uh, with the town hall uh, meeting that we had with the school board. Actually, we had two of those. And then didn't we have one here with Mike about a month ago? The third town hall, right. correct. So, so we, I think it called for three meetings. So we don't have any, Andy, could you? Uh, I, I know there's been discussion back and forth with myself, yeah. Brenda, and Andy about this. Yeah. If you. You want to go a little farther with that, Andy? Yeah. I, you know, uh, uh, you're, you're right. The uh, Section 2.2B of the Home Rule Charter provides that uh, no ordinance affecting apportionment uh, shall be considered for final passage until at least 
three advertised public hearings have been held on approval. Okay. Now that's less than crystal clear, <coughs> let me just say that. Uh, but it clearly doesn't say on approval of the plan. So it doesn't appear to me that it talks <coughs> about three public hearings on a particular plan, but three public hearings on the right. process. Uh, and that was why I recommended at the very start that when we had the uh, workshops that we call those public hearings. Uh, and I think the first one was advertised as a public hearing. I think the second one was advertised as a public hearing. But the council staff is going to have to remind me whether or not they were done so. Because what I envisioned was that first public hearing would be an opportunity for Mr. Hefner to explain the process, to report on which districts, you know, were, were out of compliance, and to allow <coughs> the public to ask questions and to make any suggestions. Then you came back with a second workshop in which I envisioned Mr. Hefner coming forward with some potential plans, uh, possible plans that were in compliance and again would allow the public to ask questions and to make any comments and suggestions that they had at that point in time. And then when it looked like there was close to a consensus, you would then put something on, the, on one of the committees to consider and you know move that on and then that would be a public hearing at the, at the committee so that'd be the third public hearing then you would have once you introduce it you got to have a public hearing for final passage which would actually have been four public hearings right. which would have been more than required by the charter that I thought you know would, would uh, satisfy that so I, again, I don't remember and can't speak for whether they were actually advertised at public hearings. I think that they were. Uh, so if that's the case, you've had two. You're going to have a third one tonight. Now, I, what I'm not sure is whether you advertised it as a public hearing. I had suggested that it be advertised as a public hearing. Again, just to try to make sure we complied with the charter. If it was, that would have been your three public hearings and then hopefully tonight uh, the uh, committee will suggest something get moved forward and it be introduced at the I guess the 26th meeting and of course then you have to lay over two weeks and you vote on it at the February 9th meeting so that's I, I guess the background that I can I can give you on it so I, I really think that what it's saying is you got to have three public hearings <coughs> again not on a particular plan because if it's on a particular plan you may never get a plan adopted because every time you introduce it if you decide you want to amend it you got to re-advertise it all again and then go through it and I don't think that's what your charter intended so you know I think you're following a, a, a pretty good process again Mr. Anderson do you know whether or not those first two workshops were advertised at public Lena, you want to take a swing at it? I'm digging. Okay. Um, while she's doing that, is there any discussion on this while while we, Councilman Landry? Just a question, Andy. The last <coughs> meeting we had after the regular meetings and the, the committee meetings, that was advertised. We had another meeting in here that night, and I thought that was our third one. And I thought it was advertised as a public hearing also, but yeah. I, again, I don't have those notices in front of me, so I can't, I can't say with certainty. But I believe I don't know, if, I don't know if Mr. Effner's here or not. But anyway, uh, I don't think he is. The, the, the council staff's going to have to confirm. But if we if we advertised him as public <laughs> hearing, we've already had three. You're going to have another one tonight uh, at your committee meeting. Then you're going to have another one when you ultimately vote on it. So you're going to end up with four or five actual public hearings. So I think you've allowed the public plenty yeah. of opportunity. To <coughs> and this is my particular opinion. I thought that was advertised at a public meeting that the <coughs> last particular meeting we had in here when we discussed the, 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 the plans. Well, I'm not sure workshops were advertised in the official journal. I think they were put out in the public that we were having a I think workshop. They were, they were, my instruction was to advertise them in the official journal. Okay. So, I, I, and so I could, that, I could but, but be I, wrong. Again, that's why I say I think we're going to have to have the staff. So what do, you, what do you suggest moving forward for tonight? Do you? 
I mean, it doesn't hurt for us to have this tonight and then change, say we've already had extensive amounts or at least qualify for what the charter's recommended? Yeah, I, I probably would deal with whether or not you want to have additional public hearings based upon what you do in your committee meeting tonight okay. with what you have available. That may tell you whether you have consensus or whether you don't or what you need to do next. So Okay. I so so I think you can delay making that. So it has been in the official journal? For, no, for these. Like she had, when we had the original date, she had an ad in the paper and then she pulled it after there was more discussion. Was and then ad. the ads about the executive committee and the two council meetings, the first ad was published on the 9th of this month for these three meetings. Yeah, but that's not what he's saying. He's he's saying about the actual workshops that we've held. Were, were the actual workshops put into the official journal? Were they put into the daily library and allowing people uh, to know that we have scheduled these workshops and they're welcome to to participate? I don't think so because they were put on by Mike Hefner, not by. They were put on the uh, joint. Uh, it was on, joint. They were put on by us. Not yeah, by, no, no, they were put on by us because that, that's what I suggested. I suggested because you wanted to have as many people from the go. public as possible there to at least be, have the process explained to them, to be able to consider it, to ask questions, to understand, and then to have a second one where, again, the public <laughs> had plenty of opportunity. Right. You know, you, you can have a public <coughs> hearing outside of one of the <coughs> regular meetings. That's correct. Uh, you know, so... You know, that, we can go into further detail into committee and decide what right. what is the uh, the consensus of the council. Right. Anyone else? Is, is there anyone here tonight that would like to address the redistricting process? This would be the time now doing public comments. Hearing none. Moving <coughs> on to number two, uh, Madam Clerk. Comments from the general public on agenda items. Uh, we do have a few. We have Mr. Kevin Broussard. Yeah, he didn't put up agenda item. Mr. Broussard. Okay. You can just step to the podium, Mr. Bruce Hort, state your name and address for the record. Yes, my name is Mr. Bruce Hort. <coughs> I'm a resident of New Iberia, all the parish. And last year, I don't know which one of your ungrateful public servants passed that taking our voting zones from us on our district side, but now you're taking away the public servants that works for us their Juneteenth that you're trying to take away, it's a, it's a holiday now. And that should be, be being done to them what y'all doing to them right now. But y'all should take a pay cut instead of cutting them. Y'all cut them down. Y'all used to have 46 workers, am I correct, Mr. Pilot? 60. And y'all down to what, 24, 25? Their pay hasn't went up. And now y'all going to dock them a holiday? Last year, y'all thought it was going to save y'all money by taking our voting polls. It didn't. And now, look what y'all doing today. Taking more of the people who keeps y'all the job. <coughs> y'all work for the people, not the corporation or the company that's giving y'all these little tax breaks. But y'all supposed to be defending the people, not cutting the people who are working for it. Look at them over there. Wordless. Too scared of their jobs. But it's up to y'all to make that better, because... Y'all not talking about giving them an increase in the minimum wage, correct? Y'all talking about cutting our national holiday. Even though it's Juneteenth and a lot of y'all don't know the, the meaning of it, y'all should go and study it. Let's give up President's Day, the worst day ever, and give these people what they deserve. I know you're wrong, so now you're from Larraville. Correct. Larry, I voted for you. Tommy, you're right by me. All of y'all. A lot of y'all don't know. But y'all work for the people. Stop making the people who work for this town deal with y'all stuff. And thank y'all. Let's let's get into the agenda item and we'll go there. Let's just get, try to keep case here. Uh, next, we have uh, Joan McAllister to summary number 5178. 
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is John McAllister. I'm a current public works employee for Iberia Parish. Um, <coughs> recently, we were given some information last month that we weren't particularly happy with. So tonight, I have gathered our thoughts into a, a quick little speech, and I'd like to take a few minutes of your time. My name is John McAllister, and I've been asked to speak on the behalf of my fellow peers in regards to the upcoming vote slash discussion on the matter of removal of holidays in exchange for June 19th. Change can be a double-edged sword, sometimes for the better, but also for the worse. Over the course of the years, the parish has seen many changes, from administrations to personnel. Some things have been for our benefit and others for our detriment. We as employees of the parish are not unaccustomed to change. We've endured schedule changes. We've persevered through lack of funding as well as layoffs. We've survived the changes in weather, championed the aftermath of hurricanes, remain vigilant in the decrease in personnel while the workload is tripled. We've even carried on the uncertain times the COVID-19 pandemic has thrust upon us. <coughs> the multitude of these things we have no control over. Fate has decided that this is the way things must be, but yet we still push forward for the sake of our parish. But now we're faced with yet another chapter that this time we feel we must unify because of the impact that this will bring on us all. We're not here to denounce the importance of June 19th, what it means, or the impact it has for so many people. But the question is why we must lose multiple days for one. Why must we give up so much when we have so little to look forward to? It seems that we give and we give and we give yet more for so little in return. We seem to be on the receiving end of decisions made that are not in our best interest as employees. We should have the ability to have our voices heard or be consulted with in the changes that affect us personally. We put our best faces forward every day for a general public who oftentimes scorns us. We often hear of how little we do. We're lazy. It's our fault things are the way they are. But yet we have little to no direct impact on things being how they are. We don't ask for much. We don't expect to become rich working here. We're promised good benefits, many holidays, good working environment, etc. But this vote tonight, and many before that, have contradicted this. Please remember that the men and women of Iberia Parish make this parish what it is. Remember that we're the backbone, and at the very least only ask that our hard work be rewarded and recognized. We ask you to consider us in your votes tonight. It may seem like a small matter to some, but to us it's not. To us that have chosen to carry on despite the adversities we face, the holidays we are currently offered by the parish are one of the few things we have left to look forward to. It comes to a point where one tires of giving and having things taken away before they've had enough. Please know that we want to be here. Remember that we have given our time and our dedication to the parish that we're proud of, but do not take us for granted. We do not assume that every change is for the better of the parish as a whole without taking into account the morale of the employees it affects. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. McCall. Uh, next. Next speaker, Rashad. I'm not even going to try to pronounce the first name. I uh, wouldn't disrespect you in that way. If you could state your full name and address for the record. Uh, good evening. Khadijah Rashad, uh, 2212 B Street, New Iberia. Uh, I'm here to give uh, my presentation <coughs> on what is Juneteenth. Juneteenth is a federal holiday in the United States commemorating the emancipation of African-American slaves. General Granger rode to Galveston, Texas with the order to read <coughs> out loud the freedom announcement for all the slaves. That was in 1865, which meant they worked for almost two years not knowing they were free. No one compensated them and Compensated is to give someone something, typically money, in recognition of loss, suffering, or injury incurred. At least we can honor them, our ancestors, on a holiday. What good person or elected official would take that day of celebration away? 156-year-old holiday. I don't fully believe that the Iberia Parish Council know what kind of message they are sending to the communities 
or to their constituents. Or maybe they do. Yes, we have the following days off as holidays. Labor Day, Sugar Cane Festival, Thanksgiving, Christmas Day, New Year's, Dr. Martin Luther King Day, Mardi Gras, Ash Wednesday, Easter, etc. Yes, we think it is important to celebrate Sugar Cane Day because our ancestors harvested it for 300 years and contributed to the economic growth of our <coughs> area parish without ever being paid. We don't have a day to celebrate their selfishness for our contributions to the welfare of Iberia Parish. Therefore, it begs the issue to argue against this federally funded holiday that 100% of the votes, not one person, voted against it. In closing, we need to remind our elected official this is not coming out of their personal bank account. As a long-term resident of Iberia Parish, an honorable discharge veteran with, with honors, New Iberia has always been run by 95% Caucasians, white males, even when we had a couple of women that were mayors. It beneath us to try and do the best thing for our community. Also, the 12 best cities in Louisiana to live in and visit. Number 12 is Borgia City. 11 is Alexandria. Uh, 10 is Lake Charles. 9 is Slidell. Com uh, 8 is Comington. Uh, Mandeville is number 7. 6 is Monroe. 5th is Natchitoches. 4th is Shreveport. 3rd is Lafayette. 2nd is Baton Rouge. Number 1 is New Orleans. Where is New Iberia? It's time that we start moving Iberia Parish the way that it should be moved for all of its uh, residents. Thank you. Hearing no other comments from the general public, I ask for a motion to go back into regular session. I have a motion by Councilman Pollard. Second. Second by Councilwoman Bruce Ord. All those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hear no oppositions. The ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to reports from finance and administrative actions. Madam Clerk. Number one, balance sheet for November 2021 on request. Number two, budget report for November 2021 on request. Moving on to reports from parish or other governmental agencies. Number one, Madam Clerk. Monthly building report for the month of December 2021. Moving on to public works reports. Number one, Madam Clerk. Public works report for the closed work orders dated November 17th through December 7th and December 8th through 14th, 2021. I believe you should have received that by uh, email. Moving on to special business, number one, Madam Clerk. Number one, our selection of officers, A, Chairman, B, Vice Chairman. Uh, before we get started, I see Ms. Janice already jumped the, uh, the gun on us, but uh, I, I'd like to present from Brenda and the staff uh, to Councilman uh, Napier on a job well done as Vice Chair this year. Con congratulations, Councilman. All right, starting on A, is there a nomination to open the floor for chairman? We, we do have a nomination from Councilman Olivier. I'd like to nominate Neil Warren for a second term as chair. I think he did a good job this year conducting the meeting, and I'd like to see it have a second term. I appreciate that, Mr. Eugene. I accept. Is there, is there any other nominations for chairs, for chairman position? Hearing none, I'll ask for a motion to close the nominations. Motion to close by Councilman Trahan, second by Councilman Olivier. Is there any, any discussion? Hearing none, roll call. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hearing no opposition. The ayes have it and the motion passes. Thank you very much and I, I look forward to continuing to serving another term. Moving on to item B for Vice Chairman. Is there a motion to nominate? I nominate Chad. I do have a motion by Councilman uh, Landry to nominate Chad. Mr. Trahan, Mr. Marshall, do you accept? Mr. Macharan fails to accept the nomination, Mr. Landry. Do you yield back? I yield back. Mr. Landry yields back. Councilman Trahan. Mr. Napier. Councilman Trahan, nomination for Mr. Napier. Mr. Napier, do you accept? I accept it. Councilman Napier accepts. Is there any more nominations on the floor before we close? Hearing none, I'll need a motion to close the nominations. Move. Have a motion by Councilman Olivier and a second by Councilman Marty Trahan. Any discussions on closing? 
Hearing none, roll call. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition. The ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Congratulations, Councilman Trown. Thank you. Moving on to council member announcements. Is there any announcements by the council, council members? No announcements. Moving on to parish president announcements. Count, uh, parish president Reshort. I'm going to try to be kind of brief, uh, give a quick update <coughs> on the public works. That, that was the DOTD notifications. There you go. Over the last two weeks, uh, uh, Public Works has been doing some cleaning of culverts in District 9, some collapsed culvert work we had to get done in District 3 and District 13. Uh, we had some inspections of culvert works that we had to get done in District 13 as well. We had debris pickup in District 3, District 9, District 14, uh, roadside drainage work in District 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13, uh, grading roads <coughs> in District 9, 10, 12, 14, uh, road patching work being done or was done in District 3, District 8, District 9, 10, 11, 13, and 14. Uh, road repairs in District 2 and District 12. Signage work done in District 3, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 14. Shoulder work done in District 10 and washout uh, work done in District 5 and also 13. And we did complete the Lake Dultry uh, boat ramp uh, uh, area which is something that we have been trying to get done for quite some time. Of course, we had to wait until we get a nice north wind. And uh, it took, seriously, it took eight months. It took a long time to get this done, but we finally got it done and taken care of in-house, which is a great deal. Uh, bef before I get too far on this here, um, we had some parish councilmen, of course, not parish councilmen, employees from, from, uh, from, uh, from a very parish government <coughs> uh, talk in reference to um, the boat that you guys are going to be considering tonight. I really want you all to take in consideration everything that's going on. Um, of course, we had people talk about the number of employees we have. We have an unbelievable staff. I'm not telling you to do anything other than please consider what's being said. We have an unbelievable group of people that work here in our Barrier Parish, and we want to try to keep them as much as possible. And someone mentioned the fact <laughs> about how we're trying to uh, increase the pay. Uh, of the employees that we have, of course we are. Uh, but it's not going to be easy in the situation that we're in right now. You know, the, the way government work, a lot of people don't quite understand that when you have employees work in public work, excuse me, in, 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 in roads, they get paid from the road funds. When they work in, in, in solid waste, they get paid from solid waste. When they work in drainage, they get paid from drainage. A lot of people don't quite understand exactly how it works, but we have some employees, I'm telling you all, uh, in every department. I'm not <coughs> talking public works, I'm not talking parks, I'm not talking health, you know, I'm talking <coughs> throughout our barrier parish government. So just consider what it is that we're looking at doing tonight. Uh, I want to talk about one other thing that's going to be on the agenda for y'all to vote on, and that's for the, um, the, the building that we're looking to purchase for the sheriff. Uh, y'all know that we have been looking for years to get a building uh, for the sheriff's office. We've looked at buildings on Highway 14, we looked at buildings at the, all over the parish. We have finally identified, uh, and I will tell you right now, this particular location came to me from the sheriff and a, a group that he had put together looking at buildings in Iberia Parish. They called me up one day, went look at it, and this is a great opportunity in my personal opinion for Iberia Parish. You know, the sheriff, this facility here, have all the space that we need. Currently, we work out, or shall I say, when I'm saying we, I mean the sheriff department, have four different locations where they work out of. The administration work here, the Bureau of Investigation is at the Port of Iberia, Special Investigation is at the Port of Iberia, uh, the sex offenders is at the port. We have all kinds of things going on. This particular location that we're looking to get for the Sheriff Department, not, and he can get up and talk about this later when we get there, is in my personal opinion, um, probably an opportunity that we will not find again and everything lined up perfectly for to to work if the council approved and I just want to mention that to you guys uh, one other thing on um, last Friday we had a ribbon cutting um, for Church Alley uh, Cafe and Bristro, uh, uh, Bistro uh, Bistro unbelievable place in fact I'll be there tomorrow morning eating breakfast uh, we have a lot of people in Iberia Parish trying to uh, open up businesses and bring in things and bring in opportunities to the people of Iberia Parish uh, we need to really take a look at what's going on here. We have a great uh, parish, and, uh, and things are going very well. Thank God to the Council Warren. 
Um, Brian, it was a great year last year working with you guys. I look forward to working with you all again this year and all of the parish council. We have a lot that need to take place. I think we all know that. And the good thing about it is we won't have a change. Uh, we're going to continue doing what we've been doing for the last several months, and, and I look forward to it. Uh, another thing for your, for your information only is uh, the auditors was here last week, um, and they worked on agreed upon procedures. Uh, they're going to come back here in April. Everything is going good in Iberia Parish. Auditors are fine. Everything is fine. And last but not least, uh, I was able to do a state of the parish. Uh, it is actually running right now on the open channels in Iberia Parish, and um, we're looking fairly decent. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Members, are there any questions for the parish president at this time? Hearing none, moving on to consent agenda items. Madam Clerk. Minute special meeting of December 1st, 2021. Regular meeting of December 8th, 2021, and regular meeting of December 15th, 2021. Summary number one introduced by the clerk of the council. A resolution accepting the resignation of Mr. Mr. William Richard Ware as a member of the Iberia Parish Communications District, representing the ambulance service effective immediately. Summary number two, introduced by the clerk of the council, a resolution accepting the resignation of Mr. Kevin <coughs> as a member of the Iberia Parish Airport Authority, effective immediately. Summary number three, introduced by Lloyd Brown District 4, a resolution proclaiming February 2022 as Black History Month in Iberia Parish. And summary number four, introduced by the Airport Authority, a resolution amending the 2022 Airport Authority Fund Budget in the net amount of $233,333 to recognize additional state funding received for a Hangar 88 project funded through FPNC and appropriate expenditure line items in accordance with state-defined budget allocation. I have a motion by Councilman Brown accepting the consent agenda, a second by Councilman Landry. Councilman Brown on discussion. Councilman Brown waves. Councilman Landry. Councilman Landry waves. Is there any discussion on the consent agenda at this time, members? It, any any request to redraw an item from the consent agenda? Hearing none, I need a um, roll call members. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition. The ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to ordinances introduced for public hearing and adoption. Summary number 5178, introduced by the parish president. Madam Clerk. An ordinance to amend the personnel policy manuals for the administrative and legislative staffs to include June 19th, Juneteenth as a holiday and further to include that A, <coughs> on a Saturday, the holiday will be observed on a Friday, and B, if date falls on a Sunday, the holiday will be will be observed on a Monday. Do I have a motion? Oh. I have a motion by Councilman Pollard, okay. I'm sorry, Councilman Landry, and a second by Councilman Olivier. Councilman Landry in discussion? I've, I've, one of the things that we, we never discussed was not doing June 19th and getting rid of the holidays. We, the holidays is up for discussion. This is only about June 19th. Uh, we, uh, I've heard another person say it about why we doing it, but uh, this is something that I think is very relevant and it's a national holiday, and I think we should move forward on it. I'm, I'm good. Councilman Landry yields back. Councilman Olivier on discussion. Thank in support of adding this holiday to our holiday schedule in Iberia Parish. I think it's a, a, a great incentive boost for our parish employees, and I really think that uh, it, it, they are justified by getting it. Thank you. Councilman Olivier yields back. Any other discussion members? Councilman uh, Napier on discussion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, my, Mike did touch on it. So, <coughs> for the gentleman that, that, that said that we were against June 19th, that is totally wrong. I don't think anybody up here uh, said that we didn't want to support that. that, that I want to clear the record. I don't think there's anybody up here that said uh, we didn't want to support Juneteenth as a, as a holiday. Uh, when it came up, when the administration brought it up, to make it a, a parish holiday. Uh, I don't think anybody up here realized how many holidays that parish government gets, which was, we were told at the time, Donna told us, and it was like, I could be wrong, maybe 17, <coughs> maybe, 
to me, I run my own business. I've talked to a lot of, I know, uh, I've talked to a lot of employers. Uh, I haven't talked to one that had big business, small business that has that many holidays. The thing that concerned me is vacation is one thing. When you have a vacation, that person's off. When you have a holiday, parish government is shut down totally. So that's 17 days. Another one would be 18 days as a representative of not only the people that work for us, but the whole parish. To me, that was a concern for me. I would rather sit down and, 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 and try. Look, we were handed a bad deal when we came in in 16. We had to freeze the budget. Y'all all know that. We, we were, so we had to re re change the way that we did business. And that's why there wasn't money to give, you know, more pay and all that. So I think we need to do that. I think <coughs> you, you, we, we need to try to make, you know, give, give all our employees more pay more vacation, but I cannot sit here and support more holidays where we shutting down the whole government. I have a problem with that. I don't have problem with trying to make our employees more per hour, um, more uh, birthday, p something, but to, to support another day on holiday, I just can't do it and it's nothing against nobody in particular that works with public works or, or I mean uh, uh, the whole p uh, government so I I put together <coughs> a, a, a list and, and I'm, I'm gonna go over it and everybody has one and at the end I'm gonna make a substitute motion that we adopt this and, and we can make some changes and then we sit down with administration and all, and we try to figure out a way to, to give more pay. I, I'd rather pay you more per hour than to shut down the government, you know? So what, what I came up with, and looking back on, on what you had, was New Year's Day, Martin Luther King Day, Mardi Gras, Good Friday, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, Independence Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, and Friday, Thursday, Friday, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. That's 13, 13 holidays in a year. And when they fall on a weekend, you still get it. If it falls on a Saturday, you get Friday. If it falls on a Sunday, you get Monday. Um, you know that 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 that's my thing. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping some of my colleagues will, will will say how they feel. Thirteen is still a lot of days. You know, to to I, I just can't support shutting down government another day. I'm not against Juneteenth at all. That that was totally out of line right there. We we nobody ever said that. I just think we need to rearrange on on how we spend in taxpayer money. That, that's all it is with me. And, and, and we should be trying to give y'all more money per hour. You know, if it, and, and so this is almost three weeks and then your vacation time. You know, I don't think we being unfair or unreasonable with our employees. I, I'll yield back, but I'd like to make a substitute motion, Mr. Chairman, that me, we adopt Let me adopt hold that until we get to the floor. Yep. And then what we'll do is remember, members, the debate is about the uh, main motion currently, and then we'll have the debate on a substitute motion at the time when it's presented to the floor. One second for me, Mr. Landry. Anyone else before I go back to second comments? Anyone else, members? Councilman Landry, recognized? I just think, and I don't disagree with you, Brian. I think the main motion is whether we're going to accept Juneteenth as a holiday. And I, I do think we can go back and revisit uh, in what we got. I have no problems, but I think the main motion should be adhered to. If, you, if you're looking at what you'll substitute, we're changing everything, so we got to go back and look at all the holidays we got right now. And it's just my particular opinion, and I yield back. 
Councilman Lander yields back. Anyone else on discussion? Anyone else on discussion? The main motion hearing none. Is there any uh, amendments on the floor? I believe at this point in time you had an amendment. Do you want to bring that to the floor? A motion to amend? So, uh, if I could ask, so if let's say we don't uh, move forward on changing the whole all the holidays. If we vote in favor of, of Juneteenth, it's going to add that day. That They're going to have 18. Can we change it at this time too, or do we have to come back as? I, I think I asked that in committee. Would it be still? Mr. Would it be germane if we did that? Mr. Mr. Shealy. Mr. Shealy. I believe the question on the floor so, from Councilman uh, so, Napier was kind of similar to what I asked you in committee. My, my Him changing this with an amendment to change the full. Uh, the full uh, section, would it be germane on the floor for us to do that and have an adoption, including Juneteenth in it? Yeah, look, I, I, I don't believe that y'all should be limited in your substitute motions as long as it's in line with what was, was done. And what is before you is to amend the personnel policy relating to your holidays. Okay. So I, I think you can make it you know, uh, and it's still germane. Sure. I, I, I hate to see y'all come and your hands be tied when ordinances <coughs> and resolutions are introduced and, and you not have any ability or leeway to make amendments or to discuss it. Sure. So I, I think a substitute motion would be germane as long as that substitute motion was Inclu only limited to holidays. So it I, my question I'm including mm -hmm. Juneteenth and that's what the what the ordinance is about having Juneteenth as a holiday <coughs> so I'm including it in the substitute would that I mean I could yeah you made the recommendation as germane of what you're doing okay so I make a substitute motion that we adopt these 13 um, holidays and, and and make that policy uh, with parish government employees. I have a motion on the floor for an amendment by Councilman uh, Napier. Is there a second to the amendment? Second. I, I have a second by Councilwoman Broussard. So, Councilman uh, Napier, you do have the first bit of discussion on the substitute motion. So look, I just I, I, I stated my case. You know, so you know, I just. Y'all think about it. Everybody has it in front of y'all, you know, um, you know, to make this 13 days and they don't lose any if they fall on the weekend. Um, the only, to tell you the truth, the ones that, if you <coughs> want to go back, that, that, I, that I took out was uh, Sugar Cane Festival, All Saints Day. Washington. President's Day. Day. Oh, Washington. Yeah. So. That, that, that was That's it so okay. I mean I, to me this is still good you, you you can call around and talk around to any business around here I haven't found one that has that many holidays um, you do Eugene I'm gonna go work for you so uh, <laughs> but anyway think about it that that's my that's my my thing so councilman Napier thank you. yields back councilwoman Bruce was on the second for discussion on the substitute yeah, I mean, this is this is one of those times that we're put in a very tough situation where we have to balance um, the interest of our employees versus the the interest of the people that we serve and, and the constituents of our parish. Um, and I think um, you know we we have to we have to do that hard thing when when you're looking at. Uh, the number of days when you add Juneteenth, that <coughs> puts you at um, 17 holidays in the years that New Year's Eve and Christmas Eve falls on a weekday. Um, the, the state schedule uh, for 2022 is nine days. So um, even under the proposal of uh, Mr. Napier of 13 days, I mean, we're still way ahead of what um the state holiday schedule is so i i mean i think i think this is a a, a good balance between what what the employees want 
but being responsible to the taxpayers at the <coughs> same time. I, I think it's a, 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 a in the middle kind of balance. So that's why I'm supporting you, Mr. Napier. Councilwoman Bruce Argyle's back. Councilwoman uh, Lady Brown is recognized. Um, I would just like to state that our employees are our constituents as well. And being that we've gone from 60 employees to pretty much 20 employees, Sorry. that means that they're currently working two to three times harder. You know, I can't imagine how stressful and overworked our employees are at this point. And um, I believe that they are pretty much entitled to this holiday <coughs> being added to the schedule just due to the fact that they're turning over two to three times more in production than they had to do before. I yield back. Councilwoman Brown yields back. Councilmember Charhon is recognized. Marty <coughs> Charhon. Yeah. I'm looking at the holiday schedule for 20 and 2021 for the state was, uh, we counted 17. Uh, they include Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, Martin Luther King, Mardi Gras, Good Friday, Independence Day, Labor Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving Day, Christmas Day Observed, <coughs> New Year's Day Observed, uh, Juneteenth, Memorial Day, Juneteenth, Acadiana Day, Thanksgiving Friday, and, oh yeah, I said Christmas Eve already. We counted 17, and that's following the state of 21, not a 22. Councilman Trollhorn, you finished? Finish. Councilman Trollhorn yields back. Council, Councilman Brown is recognized. You know, I hear, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, we got to run this place like a business. Well, I, I see it different. I see that a business run for a profit. And I see this government is here for service. And if you, you can take and say, well, in my business, they're not, they only work this many days, they got this days off. You can take that and look, because you're looking for a profit. But if these people that work for us and they're giving the people the value of what their taxpayers are paying. It's just a service. And because they have the days off and they're still giving the service, they're getting their money worth. I yield back. Councilman Brown yields back. Anyone else in the discussion, members? Councilman Olivier is recognized. The, uh, Lloyd's comment, even though they have a day off, there's employers that still have to go into work for emergency situations on those days off. So I really feel that our employees, as hard as they work, how committed they are to service in the people I bury your parish, deserve that extra holiday. Thank you. Councilman Olivia yields back. Councilman Rawson is recognized. Hey, they do go to work. I know that because I've had some phone calls while they were off on vacation saying they work and whatnot, but that adds on to K time. Yeah. So here we are, we just added more cost. Yeah. And a lot of people throw around the time and a half. When you add that up later on down the road, it's actually two times if you do the math. And I know you're gonna say, no, it's not, but it does. And the service, I don't know how many phone calls you get, but I do get some that they're not happy right now. So, yeah. and then the, uh, just to, to put the number out there, if I remember right, it's 7.6 average holidays per American <coughs> citizen, however you wanna say it. So yeah, you are correct. This right here, this schedule is still double my days off. So uh, I don't, I don't know. Anybody want to help me on how many vacation days they get? I'm just curious. I don't know. Anybody? Parish, parish employees. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to vacation say a number days? out of. Yeah. I don't want to be out of line. Depends on how long. What kind of service? Yeah. You say vacation days. Yeah, I'm just curious. Depends on how long you work. I don't know. If a person worked three years, they get three years, you know, it depends. Some might get a week. It depends on how, your, your time and service. Yeah. And then the state holidays, I don't know where we the, get The that. state holidays, I want to make a correction yeah, right here. I don't know what that is. Yeah. Either, so. um, in fact, I was on the phone today with someone from the state. You might want to look at these colors right here when you're talking about the state holidays. These are what's called statutory holidays from the governor, the nine days that we're talking about. Great example is we just come from Christmas. 
where you had, I think Christmas Eve may have been on a Thursday, Christmas may have been on a Friday. The state gave their employees off the Monday, or whenever it was, but they was off the Monday as well. You know, so anyway, I was just, you know, I'll, I'm not in this discussion, so um, I want to yeah. hear what, you know, you guys making this decision. Councilman Rawson, are you finished? Councilman Rawson, they yields back. Councilman Villator is recognized. You go back. I think I'd like to find a middle ground. I think we'll, if we do June, Juneteenth, we're going to 18 days. I think cutting down to 12 is a big difference. I've always thought that if you did the 12 mandatory vacation days with three floating holidays, those three days, you don't shut down the government. If Paul wants to take off, he can. If you, so you're still getting 15 days, which is two and a half times what the people get, but you're not shutting down the government. If it's about closing, you know, the whole parish being off, I think you kind of meet in the middle with the numbers and those floating holidays, the whole government doesn't shut down. Only the people that want to take off the Friday festival, the whatever day they want, their birthday. You know, you get three, I guess you want to call it lawn yard days, whatever. In the private sector, they call it a floating holiday. That's where, that's what I would think to find a, a middle ground. Going from 18 down to 12 or 13 is a drastic cut. Now, I understand I've had people call me that they didn't take the job because of the pay, you know, which we understand that. It's because it's the time off and, and those benefits. So I think we could maybe find somewhere else to meet in the middle where they're still getting 15 days, which is a lot. It's three weeks of holidays, but three of them, you don't shut the government down. You know, you're, only, you're still shutting it down for the 12 days that Brian's talking about and using the other three as a floater. You know, if, if the secretary wants to be off, the other secretary is still working. You know, that may be something we could look at too instead of just cutting it down by almost 30%. You know, but I'm all for Juneteenth, but I still think our numbers need to come down some. You know, that may be another thing we could look at. Councilman Viator yields back. Councilman Mosheran, on discussion? Yeah, I keep hearing the comparison about the private sector you can't compare the private sector with parish government. First of all, like Mr. John hit on, came over here for benefits, not for pay. <coughs> I mean, right down the road from us in Kutu, they're, they're doing a development right now. They're working seven days a week sometimes. But I bet you those operators are making $25, $30 an hour. Our guys aren't. You know, I, I, I can't even imagine trying to take something away from these employees right now. Brian, you hit on the point. You, you, you hit on the fact of trying to get him some increased pay. That would be great. Maybe if we got him increased pay, then we could revisit this. I mean, they've been denied raises for the last five years. And they're working with less, and we expect more. Scott made a comment that he's getting phone calls. People aren't happy. Hear what John said. They hear all the bitching. We're hearing the same bitching, but they're working with what they have. Mr. Macharan, keep it, keep it G, please, sir. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I might get kicked out of you. We but, could get kicked well, off of YouTube. Well, it's just it's frustrating because I, I get the same calls y'all get, but you know you call and see when y'all patching. Well, I got a crew doing bulkhead right now. I don't have enough people to patch, and the reason they can't hire is because we don't pay enough. So you got to make it up somewhere with the benefits, guys. I, look, I just. Y'all know where I'm standing with this. I just can't see taking some away. If we can get them more money per pay, I'd be glad to revisit this. But the comparing with private sector and government, it just you can't do it. You're making a lot more in the private sector. <laughs> Councilman Matran, you finished? Yeah. I'm Councilman Matran, yours back. Councilmember Landry, do I hear a third round? Uh, well, I made the original Councilman motion, Landry. but th this is on the substitute. <laughs> And I do think we're dealing with people here. And we're dealing with people who bust in their backside to move this, fo this parish forward. I'm not going to be, uh, belabor the point. And one of the things I thought we should review it later on, this is about one holiday. And I think we need to look at it. I'm kind of like Chad. If we can pay more money, then yes, if we can review this. But we got parish employees, and Dexter and them know I stay on them. 
<coughs> but they they do what they can do with the people they got. And I don't see where we need to, to belabor that point. So I'm a, I'm gonna go against the substitute motion. And it's it's not about the holidays, but I think our employees need something to look forward to. Councilman Landry yields back. Councilman Trejo on discussion. Well, I see we, it's coming up a problem with pay. Can we do away with the Archer study? And what are St. Martin Parish and Youngsville and Bruce Hall are paying there? Let me let me just say this, Mr. Trejo, just not to get off the subject. I do believe the parish president is working on the Archer currently. No, why spend money on the Archer if we ain't gonna follow it? Why spend forty thousand? Well, let me let me just say this in, in defense of it. The Archer hasn't been visited since 2009. If I, I 2012. Think. Is it 12? Okay, 2012. So it's hard to follow something that's been outdated for nearly 10 years. I said that one with the Archer, but you have to you have to have a a job description Correct. Um, on what a, what an employee is actually doing, and then they have to tell you what that job description is supposed to pay. And uh, you're right, we haven't been, uh, this haven't been done since 2012. The good thing about it is we do have money in the budget for an Archer study to be done right now. And that's exactly Correct. what Donna is doing. So we, yeah, but and what, what you're saying, <coughs> what you're saying, Take that 4,000 and give it to them if we can do away with yeah, it. But, uh, now, hold on. Okay, now, now, we just all right, I'm done, that's now. good. Okay. All right. Councilman Tron, are you finished? Well, I'm gonna that's go visit good. St. Martin in Youngsville and see what they are doing because they're stealing employees from us. I'll report back to the council. Thank you, Councilman Trump. Uh, anyone else on the amendment? Hearing any discussion on the amendment? I do believe Councilman Napier on an amendment, on his amendment. Yeah, look, uh, look, I understand. And, and I'm, I'm just, <laughs> I, I, I don't wanna hurt any employee. I, that's not what I'm trying to do here. Um, I'm, I'm trying to represent the people that 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 are that are pay the taxes in in this parish, which includes y'all, you know. So, um, look, what if? And I'm ju I'm just talking here. So, it, it'd be hard for me to support another one. That's just me. If if y'all want to go with it, I want to support Juneteenth. But can we say, let's take President's Day and maybe. Um, uh, All Saints Day and give them and, and give them Juneteenth you know swap take two and, and give them one okay so l l let me let me it's hold on hold on we'll have we'll members we're gonna remain in regular order let me let me just say this there was a motion on the floor are you redrawing the okay. motion yeah I'll re I'll so the amendment's motion. been redrawn so now we're back to the main motion so the discussion becomes about the main motion now okay so go ahead so I would like to make make a substitute where we put Juneteenth in and on the list that I had um, add, add in um, Sugarcane Festival that that's a local one and um, what was the other one Paul well we, we take away we take away presidents and take away all saints and <coughs> add Juneteenth just do an even swap no. Brian just doing and since I would suggest Which that one since there's so many vacations in November already that you would swap um, Juneteenth for All Saints Day because they already okay. have Veterans Day November 11th and then Thanksgiving. Yeah. You, you make that motion, I'll second. I'll make that motion. I have a motion <laughs> on the floor. By, I have an amendment by a motion to amend by Councilwoman Bruce Hart. Do I have a second? Brian, do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Councilman Napier makes the second. So if I if I'm understanding this correctly, we all we doing is taking Juneteenth and swapping a date. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. Deleting okay, all so, Saints so, Day and adding Juneteenth. And that just for the record, that no employee is going to lose a day. Is that correct? Right. You're okay. Just not adding one. So. Saints is not a observed by the state. It's not like a. No, it's not a state holiday. No. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I, I'm let, let, let me just say that we have an amendment on the floor currently by Councilwoman Bruce Ord and, and Councilman Napier. Is there any discussion <laughs> on the amendment? I do have discussion by Councilman Olivier. 
I'm not going to support taking any holidays away from our employees. I think they work too hard. <laughs> Councilman, let, let me just, for clarification, I don't believe the amendment has taken anything away. You're just replacing a day. Just for clarification. Councilman Olivia yields back. Councilwoman Brown is recognized. Councilwoman Brown yields back. Anyone else on the substitute motion? Hearing none. Roll call. Those in favor, this is the amendment. Those in favor will vote in favor. We'll say aye. Aye. All right, raise your hands. I got Councilman Trahon, uh, Councilman uh, James Trahon, Viator, uh, Bruce Ord, Gosheson, Napier, Landry, Paul Landry, and then Councilman Rolsonay. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's, I thought Leroy was trying to vote there. All right, that's seven in favor. Those opposed, raise your hands. I have Councilman Pollard, Councilman Michael Landry, Councilman Brown, Councilwoman Brown, Councilman Olivier, Councilman Macharan, and Councilman uh, Marty Tron. That's seven against. The amendment fails. Back to the main motion. On the main motion, is there any discussion, members? Hearing no discussion, roll call, members. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Raise your hands, guys. Ayes, I have uh, Councilman Michael Landry, Councilman Pollard, Councilman Brown, Councilwoman Brown, Councilman Olivier, Councilman Macharan, Councilman Marty Tron, Councilman James Tron, Councilman Viator, Councilwoman Broussard, Councilman Gosheson and Councilman Landry and Councilman Rossonay. Those opposed, Councilman uh, Napier is opposed. That motion carries. That was a long agenda item right there. All right, moving on to resolutions introduced for public hearing and adoption. Summary number five introduced by the parish president, Madam Clerk. Do I have a motion? I have a motion by Councilman Olivier, second by Councilman Marty Tron. Cons Councilman Olivier? Councilman Olivier, you. Uh, waves, Councilman Tron? Hold on one second, guys. Councilman Tron waves. Any discussion, members? Hearing no roll call, those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to summary number six, introduced by Warren P. Goshishan, District 5. Madam Clerk. A resolution requesting the inspection and, and repair of various railroad crossings throughout Iberia Parish. Do I have a motion? I have a motion by Councilman Macharan, second by Councilman Michael Landry, Councilman Macharan. Councilman Landry. Uh, members, uh, I brought this before you. I asked that you table it without a date. We are currently working on some things that the that can improve it, so I'll just ask for a table without a date on it. I have a, mo a motion by Councilman Olivier to table, a second by Councilman Macharan. Any discussion on the table, members? Yeah, Mr. Macharan. Hearing no discussion, roll call. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, hearing no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. That item is tabled. Summary number seven, introduced by the Clerk of the Council, Madam Clerk. A resolution appointing Mr. Timothy Joseph Dronet II to the Iberia Parish Communications District representing the ambulance service for the remainder of a four-year term to fill a vacancy created by the resignation of Mr. William Richard Ware, whose term expires on March 10th, 2023. Do you have a motion? I have a motion by Councilman Second. Olivier. Second by Councilman uh, Michael Landry. Councilman Olivier. Councilman Landry. Waved. Any discussion, members, on the main motion? Hearing no discussion, roll call. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed? <laughs> Hearing no opposition, the ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Moving on to summary item number eight, introduced by legal counsel. Madam Clerk. A resolution ratifying and confirming the agreement to buy and sell a movable property, Cargo Ceramics Incorporated Building, executed for the property located at 4701 West Almondola Drive at New... New Iberia, Louisiana, <coughs> funding for the purchase thereof to be provided by separate resolution, providing for the effective date thereof, and otherwise providing with respect thereto. 
Hold on one second. Uh, Laney, please read the note for suspension of the rules. Note, motion to suspend the rules will be needed at this time. As this item was not considered by the executive committee. I had a motion by Councilman Napier and a second by Councilman Brown. Councilman Napier on discussion. So, uh, I think everybody went, look, I, I, I hope everybody did. I was just, <coughs> just to let y'all know, it is impressive, this building. Mr. Richard was totally right. It's, to see the outside is one thing, but when you go inside, and the second floor, it's ready for the sheriff to move in. He was there with his uh, with his people, and I'm gonna tell you, it is a very good building in very good shape. Um, it, it's it's everything I I think that he needs plus, and we won't have to revisit this for a very very long time. I encourage y'all to to support the sheriff on this, and let's give him that. Bit. I'm sorry. Yeah, guy. yeah, I'm just making he's a comment from what, what I saw. It's it's in good shape. You in, in a hurry to go home, Marty? Yeah. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> See you later. Uh, yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, Come on, guys. Uh, you, do, you got the floor, Mr. Trump. No, I'm finished. Let Marty go home. Okay, Mr. Napier, reserve, uh, yields back. Councilman Brown was for second on discussion. Uh, yeah. But uh, I don't think we need to suspend the rule. Correct, we do. Yeah, we do. We do. We do? Yeah, you, I, it doesn't matter. It's not a unanimous, it's a 10 vote threshold. Well, I mean, do, uh, Larry, do, do we have to suspend the rule? I ask that it be put on the council agenda directly. And I, I, I didn't think it needed to because this is really akin to what y'all vote on every time about uh, allowing the president to sign a cooperative endeavor yeah. or anything else. If you, if, and I structured it this way for a particular reason. But look, if you suspend the rules, it's it's a uh, belt and suspenders. We're, you know, we're we're we're, we're fine. But if you'll notice, if you'll notice later on on the. Uh, <coughs> committee agenda you have actually the appropriation and, and I knew that that would be voted on tonight and then moved on to the next time so you would have plenty of time my purpose of trying to get it directly on the agenda was to send a message to Carbo that yeah. you know that we were in favor of and to let the sheriff know because the sheriff has a lot of uh, additional things he's got to do in preparation for it so that's the reason I didn't put it on the I didn't ask it to be put on the uh, co committee and I asked it to be put directly here. Uh, anyway, but I, I'm more than happy for y'all to suspend the rules. Well, and move I, I, forward. I, I, let me just say, I mean, we, we, we hadn't done the process yet, but I'd like for us to do that so that it's been the norm before on certain things that have not went directly to committee. So I, I'd like to keep it norm if we can. Um, and, and again, the discussion right now should be about we should have suspended the rules to begin with. And I'll ask that we do that and then we'll repeat discussion again. So, uh, Mr. Brown, if, if I can get you to yield back and then just allow that the council suspend the rules and then we can go back to the main motion. All right. So this is going to be the vote just to suspend the rules. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, here no opposition. The ayes have it. The motion carries unanimously. Now, the motion is still good with. Councilman Napier and Councilman Brown. Now we're on the discussion of the main motion of uh, accepting. Councilman Brown, I apologize for cutting you off, sir. Right. Will you finish? That's all right. You sure? Uh, look, y'all know this is a no-no for me, but since we going to, since everybody think that it has to be done, I'm going to ask you to look twice before we suspend any more rules. I'm going to ask you all to do that. Okay. All right. Okay. C Councilman Brown yields back. Anyone else on the discussion of the building? Yes. Councilman Winter. And I'm, I was very impressed. I went over there and uh, I think the sheriff could move us all over there and we still have some room, but very impressive building. <laughs> Thank good. you, Councilman Landry. I, we can move in. Listen, I, I know we haven't had the official sheriff here before. Sheriff, you, you have an opportunity if you'd like to step forward and address the council. We hadn't had the pleasure yet. We're not going to ask you to state your address, though. Well, <laughs> you, you, look, I'm going to keep it as G as I can, right? <laughs> no, look, I want to, uh, first off, thank our Lord and Savior for getting us here safe. 
I want to make sure that he blesses us to return home safely to our families. Um, this purchase is going to put the Iberia Parish Sheriff's Office and the citizens of Iberia Parish and parish government in a better position. And what I mean by that is your vote tonight is going to send a clear message to the residents of Iberia Parish that we can work together. And together, we bring a better place for us to raise our kids. We're moving forward. We're going to be more professional. And I want to thank you all for at least considering, listening, and look, I apologize for not coming up here, but I've, I've told a bunch of y'all I would not come to the parish council unless I really needed something. I'm not going to come up here and let y'all do what y'all need to do. I've got to do what i got to do. I need a good working place for my people so that we can provide the right service for the people of Iberia Parish. Public safety. It sends a message that we're working together as a group, the sheriff, parish council, government, everybody working together. And we're sending that message to the people. It, Iberia is moving forward. We've got to change the way we've been doing things. I think this has been needed from what I hear from a bunch of you, that this should have been done a long time ago. So I thank you very much for listening to me, and I want to move this parish forward. Help me do that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sheriff, for being here. All right, members, back to the uh, comments. Anyone else on, on the uh, purchasing of the building? I just want to say this. I, I think it's a good opportunity to get the, the sheriff neutralized into one building, get him out the Roy building, put him where he needs to be. He'll still have a presence here at the courthouse, of course, for tax collection. But also, I, you know, me and Larry, we spoke, several members have spoke about the funding and how we're going to do that. Obviously, we'll do that in committee. But to me, this is a win-win situation for, for the parish. So hearing no other comments, members, I'll ask for a roll call. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition. The ayes have it, and the motion carries unanimously. Uh, I ask for a motion to adjourn. We'll take a five-minute recess, and then we'll come Thank straight to adjourn. committee. Have a motion by Councilwoman Bruce Hort to recess, uh, to adjourn. Have a second by Councilman Olivier. Roll call, members. Those in favor will signify by saying aye. Those opposed, hear no opposition. The ayes have it. The motion carries.